modern science knows that all substances consist of molecules and atoms. Atomic nuclei are formed from protons and neutrons, which consist of quarks. It is generally believed that quarks are the smallest particles, along with leptons, electrons, and neutrinos, and they are structureless. Our hypothesis says that leptons and quarks have a structure that consists of certain energies, waves. According to our hypothesis, a lepton and a quark represent coil state of a short elastic waves. What is it? Associatively, it can be compared to a tangle of snakes intertwined with each other. Each tangle is the smallest particle, a quark or a lepton, while each snake in a tangle represents a different kind of energy. When the snakes are in a coil state, we observe a particle when, under certain conditions, a tangle becomes untangled and the snakes line up linearly one after another, we observe a wave, that is, a wave state of the same particle. This is clearly demonstrated by the double silt experiment, in which a wave passed into a particle state when the conditions changed in the presence of an observer. In essence, the intertwined tangle represents the quantum level the level of particle manifestation, while short elastic waves, the snakes that make up everything, represent the beyond quantum level. What processes take place at the beyond quantum level? We know that already at the quantum level, the laws of classical physics stop working. But at the beyond quantum level, everything is radically different. The entire beyond quantum world is filled with short elastic waves, snakes, that is, different kinds of energies. When snakes are woven into a tangle, the invisible becomes visible. This is a process of the quantum world. Each such tangle is nothing but that very elementary particle of the material world. In the beyond quantum world, there are lots of kinds of energies, that is, snakes. Associatively, you can imagine that they have different patterns, colors, and thicknesses. Some are poisonous, some are not. Combinations of these energies, meaning short, elastic waves, or snakes, make up all the waves known to science today. Electromagnetic, thermal, and so on. In other words, any wave is discrete in its true nature because it consists of a multitude of short, elastic waves. Snakes. None of the snakes ever disappear. They just transform from one state to another. Also, all material objects consist of tangles of snakes as the smallest material particles. Each snake in a tangle is a carrier of certain information, a code. Depending on the combination of snakes in a particle, one or another matter with given properties is formed in the material world. Characteristics of a material object and all processes occurring in it are formed at the beyond quantum level. That is, the information embedded in a particle at the beyond quantum level determines what this particle creates. A soccer ball or a dog. If we decompose a snake tangle into linear state, all the snakes will line up in a strict sequence. And this sequence is very important. Just like in DNA, every fragment is in its place. The first snake in the sequence has a specific role. It is a carrier of information about the whole tangle and carries the main code of the program. Understanding how the world is arranged at the beyond quantum level and that everything is made up of short elastic waves has led us to an obvious fact that there are many more types of energy in the world than is commonly believed nowadays. Modern physics identifies only six types while we have come to the conclusion that there are at least 32 of them. Interestingly, this is also supported by historical facts. Our volunteers found references to the use of at least 32 types of energy in the ancient times as paradoxical as it may sound. All this information, which is new to us, was known in ancient times, and many artifacts from around the world prove this. Let's have a look at some of them.
understand what special meaning they carry. Snakes and snake tangles were not coincidental depictions. They were an associative example to explain the structure of matter at the beyond quantum level, as well as the ways to manipulate it. We will talk about that too, but a little bit later. To date, this knowledge has been mostly lost, and that's a shame because it will be of a great use to modern scientists who for decades have been struggling with questions which can be easily explained by means of this hypothesis. As an example, let's take the Large Hadron Collider, the most powerful particle accelerator in the world. What happens there? In order to study processes in the micro world, scientists use electromagnetic fields to accelerate two beams of charged particles, such as protons, at enormous speeds in the collider, and then they collide them. As a result, after the collision, scientists observe the formation and dispersion of much larger particles with a much greater total mass than they had before the collision. And science cannot explain this phenomenon. It is as if two tennis balls collided with each other and their collision would produce a bunch of scattering basketballs. How can this be possible? It's very simple. All these particles are nothing but snakes in the coil state. The energy that accelerates them, the electromagnetic wave, is also snake-like, only not in the coil state, but in the linear one, in the state of a wave. Thus, not only two particles collide in the collider, but billions and billions of snakes in the state of waves which are transformed into coil state during the collision. These coil states are precisely what we capture as a bunch of scattering particles. Thus, the hypothesis gives an answer to how two small particles can form new ones that surpass them in volume, size, and mass. In our regular logic, it seems impossible that something larger could emerge from something smaller. It is like Jesus Christ feeding over 4,000 people with just seven loaves of bread and a few fish. And there were even some leftovers. He made more out of less to us. It is perceived as a miracle. But our hypothesis explains exactly how this happens at the quantum and beyond quantum levels. The mysterious birth of virtual particles in the physical vacuum can be explained in a similar way. How does a particle, antiparticle pair emerge from emptiness and after a short time disappear again? The answer is simple. The short elastic waves, snakes, that fill the vacuum simply move from the beyond quantum level into the quantum world, forming coiled states, the very particles we can observe. In fact, the whole world is made up of snakes. There's no place where they do not exist, as it is said. There isn't a single place in the entire universe where the thinnest needle doesn't run into something. Let's take another example. In quantum physics, there is a phenomenon known as entangled particles. Two particles can be at different edges of the universe and interact with each other without loss of time. A change in the state of one particle instantly causes a change in the state of the other. How is this possible when modern physics says there is nothing faster than the speed of light? It's a question that has led modern science into a dead end. Scientists have no answer. In fact, the answer is simple. At the beyond quantum level, all these particles are located next to each other and connected by a single snake. There's no concept of distance, speed, or time in the beyond quantum world. Completely different laws work there. For example, in the material world, one of the interconnected particles can be in our hands, while the other one can be in a grain of sand on the shore of the ocean in another galaxy. Meanwhile, at the beyond quantum level, both of these particles are at a distance of a single snake, and there's no time or space between them. There can be many more than two of these entangled particles, and all of them are instantly exchanging a huge amount of information among each other. In other words, matter in the universe is constantly interacting. Another phenomenon, the nature of which our hypothesis explains, is electricity. Today, we all use electricity. We know that there is direct and alternating current, that there are electromagnetic waves and static electricity. But what electricity is in its essence, modern science cannot explain. For example, let's take static electricity. Each of us experiences it in everyday life when brushing our hair. Both hair and a comb are dielectrics. 
when we run a comb through our hair, we untangle some snake tangles and create new ones, thus releasing snakes. The snake tangles on the comb interlace with the ones in the hair. In this way, joint snakes are formed. This quantum manifestation is precisely electromagnetism, which attracts hair to the comb. By understanding these processes, even at such an elementary level, we can already provide answers to many riddles of modern science. For example, let's take an electrostatic machine. There is a paradox associated with it, which is an unsolvable riddle. When the disks of an electrostatic machine are rotated, a powerful spark between the two electrodes occurs only when there are metal spheres attached to their ends. If these spheres are removed, there will be no spark between the electrodes, or it will be barely noticeable. But if, for comparison, a device that works from a battery or a household outlet is connected to the electrodes of an electrostatic machine, an equally strong spark appears both with and without the spheres. This indicates that the electric current generated by the electrostatic machine is not capable of causing a powerful discharge without the spheres, and that the current from the battery is capable of causing the same discharge with and without the spheres. What is the difference between these two currents? The difference is that these are different kinds of electricity, and they differ not just in their external characteristics, they differ at the beyond quantum level. And our hypothesis gives an in-depth justification for the nature of electricity and its different kinds. Doesn't that remind you of anything? It's a good example for thinking people. Thanks to the hypothesis of a coil state of short waves, we understand that electricity is the same snakes in the coiled or linear state. There are many kinds of electricity. They are determined by the predominance of one or another type of snakes in their linear sequence. For example, when you comb your hair, static electricity is generated, which is represented by a certain predominant type of snakes. When magnets rotate, it's another type. In household outlets, alternating current is a third type of snakes. In batteries, the energy of chemical reactions is the fourth type. In an electrostatic machine, it is a fifth, and so on. And note that all types of electricity, just like the magnetic field, have the same first snake in the linear state, which carries a major part of information. We reserve the right to explain the understanding of how electricity works to those who will further investigate this issue. We have merely given an association and invite those who wish to understand the subject to investigate it on their own. Now, let's look from the perspective of the beyond quantum world at what's going on in an electrostatic machine when different kinds of electricity are used. As the disks of the electrostatic machine rotate, the brushes rub against their surfaces. As a result of the friction process, the snake tangles become untangled and form an electrostatic field. Some of the snakes start moving along the conductor, as if along a riverbed, forming a directed movement of snakes along the electrodes. As long as there is static electricity, there are no tangles, just a flow of snakes. And in order for a discharge to appear, that is, for the snakes to interact, we need to create conditions where they can gather in tangles again. So such conditions are created by the shape of a sphere. By flowing around a sphere at the ends of the electrodes, the snake coils up on themselves, which contributes to the formation of tangles. In the space around the metal spheres, the snakes and tangles begin to accumulate. The snakes from tangles on one side begin to cling to tangles on the other side, and their massive collision occurs. As a result, the tangles become untangled and the snakes are released. This is the discharge that we observe. We see a spark, waves are emitted in the optical range, and we hear a sharp click a sound shock wave. All of these manifestations arise as a result of interaction among the snakes. They simply transition from one state into another. Accordingly, when there are no metal spheres on the electrostatic machine, the snakes flowing along the electrodes cannot form any tangles, so they simply fly by without any interaction with each other. But in batteries and household outlets, there is a different kind of electricity. There, tangles move together with snakes in a linear state, and they interact with each other instantly. The tangle state is disrupted, and we observe a discharge in the accompanying phenomena. Therefore, this type of electricity does not need metal spheres to form tangles because it actually flows in the form of tangles. Thus, we understand that the shape of a sphere creates the necessary conditions for transformation of the linear state of snakes into a coil state. That is, in fact, the shape of a sphere or a dome creates conditions for accumulating energy. Doesn't this remind you of anything? If you have noticed the similarity with the domes of religious buildings, you are not mistaken. Ancient legends say that the first dome temples were built more than 24,000 years ago by the representatives of an extraterrestrial race known as the Apexians. They also created the first religion and the first dome shaped structures for the purpose of collecting energy from humans, which is known as Vril. 
people gathered in those temples and prayed to the Apexians as gods. This was a process similar to what we have seen in the spheres of the electrostatic machine, where static electricity accumulated. In the temples, people's energy, real, flowed through the building into the domes, accumulated there, transformed into a coil state, and was transmitted to the Apexians. The Apexians built structures of various forms in order to collect energy. Those could be pyramidal structures or towers with pyramidal or dome tops, ending with a pyramidal spire. Many such ancient structures are considered to be places of power. The paradox is that those were places where power was taken away, not given. It is also quite interesting that to this day, such shapes of structures are mainly used for places where mass gathering of people, decision making, and emotional outbursts take place. If you wanted to tell the story you just heard as a comic strip, how would you draw it? We will show you an ancient artifact that depicts this process as a comic strip. We see a temple structure with a portal above it, and a flying saucer at the top indicates that it is extraterrestrial. In those times, people couldn't know such technologies. On the left, we can see people and an indication that they're giving away their energy. This is shown in the form of snakes flying away. On the right, we see two planets, and below them, representatives of an extraterrestrial race, the Apexians, who receive energy from humans. And it is clearly shown that humans fed not only the Apexians but representatives of other extraterrestrial races as well. To this day, through our temples, we feed unknown creatures in the universe. If any of you doubts that we still worship them to this day, you shouldn't. What is unknown to us is not unknown to the priests, and this information has nothing to do with any religious feelings or emotions. This information is about the physics of processes. Thus, our hypothesis opens a new approach not only to physics but also to the history of our humankind, and reveals certain cause and effect relations of the processes taking place in society nowadays. Radiation. The second riddle of the electrostatic machine is the radiation background that is recorded near its brushes during operation. Where does the radiation come from? After all, there are no obvious conditions for its occurrence. We can explain it easily with the help of our hypothesis. The brushes rub against the disc during the operation of the electrostatic machine. The process of rubbing is a collision of a huge number of snake tangles with each other, which leads to their untangling. As a consequence, various types of snakes are released, including poisonous ones capable of biting. And destroying other tangles. These are exactly the radiation snakes that form the radiation background. This background is local and short-lived during the operation of the electrostatic machine. It disappears as soon as you stop the machine. Unlike the background radiation in nuclear reactions, which can last for a long time. Why is such a difference observed? Radiation exists in any object, but not in active state. Radiation background is a serpentarium with different types of toxic snakes biting all the tangles they interact. With. The power of the radiation depends on the position of the radiation snakes in the linear sequence. During nuclear reactions, a strong radiation background appears since there are many tangles in which a radiation snake stands first. Interacting with other tangles, it changes their code. It pulls the radiation snakes in them to the first position while losing some of its own energy. Therefore, the farther away from the center of contamination, the weaker the radiation background. Meanwhile, during the operation of the electrostatic machine, short-lived radiation appears because when the tangles become untangled, radiation snakes that were not in the first place are released. Such single snakes biting another tangle very quickly lose their energy and transition into another state. That is, they quickly lose their toxicity. Radiation snakes can penetrate anywhere, but there are exceptions. For example, lead is good at shielding radiation because the viscosity and the density of its tangles are very high, so it's not easy to destroy them. Figuratively speaking, tangles of lead consist of small sticky snakes. Interacting with them, radiation snakes quickly lose their toxicity and power. It is important to note that the position of radiation snakes in a tangle determines the strength and durability of materials. The closer these snakes are to the beginning of the linear sequence, the stronger the interaction exhibited by the tangles they're part of. Of course, 
This is all a figurative comparison, simple associative examples to explain what happens at the beyond quantum level, and it gives an understanding of what processes actually occur during a nuclear reaction and what radiation is. Taking this hypothesis as a basis, it is up to scientists to discover this. Understanding the structure of the beyond quantum world, even such an associative level, already opens up possibilities that seemed science fictional not so long ago. Manipulating matter, creating material objects, using elementary particles, prolonging human life for at least 1,500 years, rejuvenating cells in the body and completely revitalizing it at any stage. How will the technologies work that will allow us to do it all? The replicator and the health capsule. Replicator In the creative society, thanks to such technology as replicator, each person will have the opportunity to get everything necessary for life. A device the size of a microwave oven can be installed in every home. A household replicator. You can forget about the arduous chores, cooking, washing, dishwashing, and even buying many products. Because with a replicator, it will be possible to create anything out of elementary particles. How will it work? We can say that the replicator will manipulate particles, but in fact, it will manipulate what the particles are made of, that is, snakes. Moreover, in their linear state, each particle contains a few certain types of snakes, which have a strict sequence determined by the information embedded in them. Thus, by replacing one or several snakes or their sequence in a particle at the beyond quantum level, we can create a new particle, and thus a new material object. After all, the difference between a soccer ball and a hamburger is only in the characteristics of the snakes that make up their particles. This is a principle of how the replicator works. In order to create something from particles, we need particles themselves. Where can we get particles from? And in quantity to ensure the creation of different kinds of food and clothing for each person throughout their lives from the particle recycler. After all, if we know how to create objects out of the tiniest particles, we will know how to disassemble those objects. That's what the recycler will do. It will disassemble your dirty clothes, for example, or dirty dishes into particles. After disassembling the unwanted matter into particles, the recycler will pack them into a nano cartridge, which will then be used in the replicator to create new objects. Naturally, in the cartridge, the particles will be stored in a coil state of snakes in the form of leptons and quarks. Since snakes in linear state cannot be held, they're constantly in motion. Whereas in the form of particles, that is in the coil state, under special conditions, they can be stored in the cartridge without loss of properties and power infinitely long, up to billions of years. So what size should this cartridge be to store such a large number of required particles? About 1 million nanocartridges can be placed in one human hair. One centimeter of nanocartridge can contain about 10 to the 36 quarks. So, one centimeter of human hair can store as many particles as to create a great number of material objects about the volume of an entire city. Thus, a cartridge the size of a human hair is able to serve a person for a lifetime and much longer. It seems incredible that such a small size can hold large volumes. In a cartridge, particles will be stored in a compressed, compact manner, not interacting with each other. While there are enormous distances between the particles that make up material objects, the distances between elementary particles in the micro world are similar to the distances between stars and galaxies in the universe. And the reason for this fractality is in the beyond quantum world. Having this knowledge, we will rethink the value of different materials. For example, the same plastic that we simply throw away today will become the most valuable material. Why? Because the tangles of hydrocarbons contain the largest number of different snakes, 33 types, from which you can create a lot of combinations, gold, hamburgers, and so on. For the same reason, cotton will also be valued because it is close in characteristics to plastic and many other particles can be created from it. To understand the process of replication better, we'll give you a figurative example. Imagine that we put knitted jumper into a device similar to a microwave oven. At that time, a special device reads the shape of the jumper and the position of each hair in the threads of the jumper. A special device, like a crotchet hook, is then used to pick up one thread and unravel the jumper all the way down to the hairs, and each hair is disassembled into its component parts. All these components are stored compactly and tightly packed. Thus, our seemingly large jumper fits into a small box. 
When we need to make a jumper again, the previously recorded program reconstructs the hair components in the right sequence and converts them into wool strands, which are then converted into the yarn that will knit the jumper anew. All this information gives the understanding that everything in this world has been programmed and created. It's a whole programming table, but there's nothing complicated about it. Now in programming, we only use zeros and ones, whereas in the beyond quantum world, we use several hundred combinations. By comparison, our alphabet has only about 30 letters, but over a million words are made up of them. It is not difficult for a human to manipulate letters and form words. Nor is it difficult for an artificial intelligence to analyze all the possible combinations of snakes, which can be quite numerous, and to analyze the characteristics of any material object at the snake level and thus recreate its exact copy according to this information matrix. Health Capsule The health capsule works on the same principle. It will keep the human body in a perfect and young state for at least 1,500 years. By means of the same manipulation of energies, the snakes that make up all the particles in the cells of our body. From the perspective of modern healthcare, the only way to help a person whose organ, for example, has failed is transplantation. The organ has to be taken out and replaced. Meanwhile, the health capsule will restore the working organ inside a body simply by changing the states of its cells at the beyond quantum level. There are about 30 trillion cells in the human body. In its complexity, each of them is like a galaxy. If we zoom into a cell a billion times and look inside, we will see that it resembles a colossal automated factory, performing almost as many unique functions as all manufacturing in the world. Moreover, this factory would possess a characteristic that none of the most modern machines have, the ability to reproduce its own structure in its entirety in a matter of hours. A cell is such an interconnected and fine-tuned system that if even one of its components fails, the cell will die. Therefore, manipulation of a living cell at the level of molecules and atoms is impossible. It's like trying to fix the engine of the car at a full throttle. Meanwhile, at the beyond quantum level, everything is simple. It is necessary to add snakes where they're missing or remove the excess ones, and the condition of an organ will return from pathological to healthy. Rejuvenation of the body and prolongation of human life will take place according to the same principle. Information Code we can make an analogy with the program code of a website. In order to change something on a web page, we don't make changes on the website itself, but we go into the code and write what we want. For example, we change the font color in the code, and this is immediately displayed on the website itself. We can write a different picture address, and the picture that we see on the website will be replaced. That is, we make the changes in the code, and they are displayed on the page of the website. This is how the health capsule will work. We make changes at the beyond quantum level, at the code level, and they are displayed here, in the world that is visible to us. The knowledge about the control and manipulation of matter has been known since antiquity. That very caduceus symbol is a symbol of human power over matter, not a human over a human, as it was later distorted. Our hypothesis confirms that alchemy is not a fairy tale, because it is possible to change one state of an object into another by simply changing its characteristics at the beyond quantum level. Also, our hypothesis gives an understanding on what principles the exchange of information between entangled particles takes place, which means that the same principle can be used by humankind and technologies. All this is available already at the first level of civilization development. And we become a civilization when we enter the creative society. From that moment, completely new technologies based on the understanding of the beyond quantum world will be available to us. What technologies open up before us? Today's technological development is hindered by the limited speed of information transfer. But using the principle of instant interconnection of entangled particles removes any limitations. We cannot even imagine the amount of information which all matter in the universe exchanges every moment. We humanity only need to fit harmoniously into this flow, and then our lives will change tremendously. How exactly? Information exchange. First, the internet. 
the speed of information transfer will increase billions of times across the entire planet. Data exchange will be instantaneous without loss of time, no longer requiring satellites, TV towers, or wires. In just a few years, an ordinary wristwatch will be able to process millions of times more information than the most advanced supercomputer nowadays. Compared to the future technology, today, we're like primitive tribes transmitting signals using smoke from campfires. This also reveals enormous opportunities in human communication, instant connection, and communication in the form of the most realistic holograms simulating the full presence of a person. Being thousands of kilometers away, we can see each other and communicate as if we were in the same room or we can, without leaving home, be at the seashore or on a fishing trip, experiencing all the sensations.